Hi everyone, I'm Kelsey from Just So, and today I'm going to show you how I was able to make over 1,000 half square triangles headache free. I have a couple favorite ways to make half square triangles, but by far my top, top favorite is the cake mixes. These are made by Moda and designed by Miss Rosie, and there are lots of different cake mix recipes. So this one is recipe three. There's also something called a cupcake mix, which is the five inch version. This is 10 inches. So I'm, today I'm gonna to be demonstrating using this 10 inch cake mix. However, all the techniques I'm gonna show you today can also be used on the five inch cupcake mixes. Like I said, there are a lot of different cake mix recipes. The reason for this is that each one makes a different type of block. So this one specifically makes, it'll tell you the sizes right here, it makes two inch finished half square triangles. So the whole sheet just is for making two inch half square triangles. But other recipes, this one is number three, other recipes make um, half square triangles of different sizes. Some of them like recipe five will also make um, four patches and I've used that one as well. But this is my favorite just for making regular two Two inch finished half square triangles. Here's an example of a block that I made using the half square triangles from the cake mix recipe three. This is a pattern from the book Oh Scrap by Lisa Alexander if you wanted to look that up. Um, we also sell that book as well as all of the materials I'm going to talk about today at Just So. Before we get into the tutorial I wanted to show you guys all of the materials that you need to complete this project. So this is something that you don't necessarily need but once you see how I use it you're definitely going to want one. This is a rotating cutting mat and it comes quite in handy when working with cake mixes. If you're working with a cupcake mix, there's also a mini version, so it's up to you which one you grab. You're also going to want a ruler that's at least 11 inches long. Usually it'll be 12 or 12 and a half. This is a 12 and a half by two and a half inch Creative Grids ruler. This is my favorite just to throw in my sewing bag. It works with most projects. You're also going to want a 45 millimeter rotary cutter, a cake mix or cupcake mix recipe of your choice, as well as your fabric. The types of fabric that you can use for this project are either 10 inch squares that you cut yourself like I did, or you can purchase a layer cake. A layer cake is a packet of pre-cut five inch squares. There's 32 pieces in a package, which is perfect for the cake mixes. Cake mixes have 44 pieces, so that allows two for error. You're also going to want a contrast fabric. So you can either, again, like I said, pre-cut your own 10 inch squares out of a, a lighter or contrast fabric, or you can also get a solid, a Bella Solids layer cake. So at Just So, we have your choice of layer cakes with printed fabric, like this. And then we also have solid white and off-white layer cakes to pair with it. So to sum up, you're gonna need a cutting surface, a ruler, a rotary cutter, as well as a cake mix recipe of your choice and a printed layer cake and a solid layer cake. And if you're doing this with the cupcake mixes, you're going to need a printed charm pack and a solid charm pack, which are five inch squares. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so when you open up your cake mix, it's going to have solid lines and dotted lines. There's also going to be some instructions on the back side of the lid here that shows you different layouts as well as different measurements of finished quilts you can make using just your cake mix with two sets of layer cakes. They can make a pretty decently large size quilt just on their own. So here it has the instructions for the finished size if you use sashing, which looks like between 53 by 62 and 66 by 76. So you can make a really decent throw to twin sized quilt with just one packet of cake mix papers. So um, all these papers look the exact same. There's 44 of them in each packet. I'm gonna rip off one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my printed fabric and my contrast fabric and lay them right sides together. It doesn't matter which one is on top. And the nice part also, if you're cutting your own squares and you're not using pre-cut layer cakes, um, you can see that my squares aren't exactly the same size. I roughly cut them about 10 inches. And this is okay because we have a really big margin here. So you're gonna end up cutting on this smaller line. So if you're cutting your own fabric and it's kind of wonky a little bit, it's okay, it's not gonna be the end of the world. So now you're gonna lay your paper on top and I'm gonna grab some pins and I'm just going to pin it at a few crucial points. The first place I'm going to sew, um, it says start number one here by this star. And then um, I see my number one line is here and I'm gonna stitch all the way this way. So because that's the first place I'm sewing, I'm gonna kind of um, pin along that line 
making sure that I'm picking up all three of my layers with my pin. Okay, and I'll just do one on the other side here. I'm not an avid pinner. I actually don't usually use pins unless I'm doing something like this. So I'm just putting in a couple. You can put in more if you want, if that makes you feel safe. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew on the lines following the instructions they give me. So starting at the, the first star over here, going here, and then you can see there's a little arrow in the corner. And I'm gonna turn around, pivot, follow line number four, five, and six. And then I'm gonna cut my thread right here. And then we have a second star, it says start two. And we're gonna just keep following these lines, pivot at the arrow, pivot, sew across here, pivot. And then right here, it also says pivot. And then we're just going to complete it right here, okay? So it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so before we get sewing, I just want to show you guys a couple of things that I have here on my machine. I just have a standard foot. I, my machine is a Baby Lock Soprano. This is just the standard J foot that comes with the machine. I'm just going to be sewing with my needle in the center. My stitch length is the biggest thing that I'm adjusting on my machine. I have it down to 1.4, sometimes 1.6. The smaller stitch length is going to make it a lot easier for us to tear out these papers when we're finished sewing. Another thing that I have that is on my Baby Lock Soprano, but it may or may not be on your machine depending on whether or not you have an automatic presser foot, is I have my pivot function on. And I'll show you why that comes in handy in just a minute. Okay, so we're gonna get started. I have the start one star right here, going on to dotted line number one with the arrows pointing in this direction. And we're just gonna get started sewing on that line. My pivot function is making it so that my machine automatically stops with the needle down and the presser foot up. I'm going to pivot my piece here and I am actually going to now pull my needle up and move my presser foot over to my next line, number four. When I get to the end of that line, I'm just going to cut my thread. And then I'm going to find the start star number two, and we're gonna do the same thing starting from that star. Now this is when I really love my pivot function because I'm just going to pivot here. I'm just gonna sew down a little bit to my next line and then start sewing again. Pivot again, sew down to line number four, and keep sewing. All right, I have made it to the end. I'm just going to cut my thread, take out all of my pins, and now we can take it over to the cutting mat. Once you have your paper sewn, this is the point where you're gonna want to get out your rotating cutting mat. So mine is 13 inches square, and the way that this works is there's actually two different pieces. So my top piece kind of clicks into my bottom piece here and my bottom piece has a little like rubber pad that make, helps it stick to the table and then I can just rotate it very easily. So since we sewed on all of our dotted lines, we're now going to cut on all of our solid lines. There's a couple ways to do this. I like to start by cutting out my outline and then I kind of just go in order according to my where I'm rotating, but that's just kind of the system that I came up with. As you get used to sewing and cutting these apart, then you will figure out a way that you like to do it. But we're gonna start off by cutting on our outside lines first. Thank you. 
All right, so now that it's down to this size, I'm going to cut on these lines and then I'm gonna rotate and I'm gonna cut on this line, this diagonal one, and I'm just gonna keep rotating and cutting according to my rotation. Like I said, that's just something that I like to do. You could go ahead and just cut all of these straight lines and then cut all the diagonal lines or vice versa if you want, or you can cut out the middle first before you cut out the outside. It's kind of up to you. Okay, now I have all of my pieces cut and I didn't have to move my fabric and my paper once. That's why this rotating cutting mat is so, so handy for this project because if you were doing it on not rotating cutting mat, you would have had to move all of your pieces each time, which would have um, made it a lot harder to cut these apart. So now these are all individual pieces and now we have to rip off our paper. I'm just gonna kind of scooch these to the side and what I like to do is take them in groups of two and I pair them up here. And if you're familiar with working with half square triangles, you know that there's like a little tail that happens here and that's annoying to trim off. So I like to do it while um, the half square triangle is still folded closed. So I just kind of, without using a ruler or anything, trim off my little tails here. And then um, because we use our smaller stitch length, this paper will be easier to rip off. So I'm just going to um, take, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to take this smaller piece in my right hand and put my two thumbs together and just kind of rip it. That rips off half and then I'm gonna rip off the other half. And then this should just come right off, okay? Then I just make a pile. Okay, once I've done all of this ripping, I'm just going to scoop all this into the trash. I like to use a wool mat and a mini iron to have by my machine at all times, and it's the perfect size for ironing small half square triangles just like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to iron this to the dark side. So I just like to flip this open, hold the white side down with my iron, and then pull this slightly taut, just a tiny bit, and then iron it over. And there we have our ironed half square triangles. Each paper for recipe number three makes 18 two and a half inch half square triangles, which means these will finish to a two inch half square triangle. Now we can go ahead and look at our cover here at all the different design options that they've laid out. You'll notice that on the cover they have different options for block layouts. You can choose one of these or you might be making these half square triangles for a different project, such as the book that I'm using for my quilt. The one I'm using is called O oh Scrap. It doesn't come spiral bound, I added that to it. But I'll show you guys the pattern that I'm using. So these instructions actually don't tell you to use the cake mix. However, on this page, it tells you here's how you do it if you want to use a cake mix. So this is what I'm following, and I'm following this block layout. So from here on out, how you use these blocks is up to you. You can either arrange it how they have here on the cover, use a separate pattern for yourself, or kind of just experiment with what you've got. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial on how to assemble a cake and cupcake mix recipe. If you're interested in purchasing any of the materials mentioned today, then just visit JustSoStudio.com. It's also linked in the description below. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. We do lots of fun shows and exclusive sales over there at JustSoStudio. And I'll see you guys in our next tutorial. Bye.